Welcome to Public Good at House. My name is Aretha Simons from TechSoup. Today we have some amazing people who are going to share some creative tech solutions to address COVID-19 and other health demands in the community. Here we have today Roberto Baldazon. He is the founder of Vice Doc and Silibrand LLC. He's going to share an app with us that helps doctors diagnose and treat patients promptly while engaging with SMS tools. My name is Roberto and I'm the founder of Silibrand, which is the organization continuing the development of Vibe Stock, that is a patient um, engagement tool to diagnose and treat um, people with disease promptly. We actually started out this project last year with the start of the pandemic through the MIT Hackathon. Claire Donat, who's a PhD in statistics um, and teaches at uh, Chicago now, is um, was a lead data scientist that helped with the algorithm. Freddie Brimbury, who's a PhD from Cambridge in microbiology, was the one who provided a lot of the medical assistance. And then Anurag, Jesse, and Tal, um, and myself have been part of the team that has been developing this tool. We're able to take this tool and make it available for more things than just COVID, as we have already done it for COVID. And it's already available online and can be used by anyone. We were able to increase the accuracy of lateral, lateral flow assays. So that's a rapid test for COVID from a baseline of 70% to 16% by using big data that was provided by England's NHS and other public available um, data during, last, during the pandemic last year. All this data is unidentifiable, so there's no risk that we manage data that was private, but it was of great use as, as we have been able to deploy it and be used for uh, multiple countries. We're actually in the process right now of adding data for India to help with the current crisis undergoing. Why do we think this is a great tool to use, not just for COVID? Of course, with COVID as a new disease, um, as a novel virus, it was hard to diagnose it at first. A lot of the people would show up into clinics thinking that they have symptoms or even having a test that had a, a false positive. But once they got there, they would realize that they don't have the virus, but potentially might get infected by others who actually do have it. The, uh, the opposite was also true. Uh, people that have gotten multiple tests that come out of negative and actually have plenty of symptoms and, and a case that would correlate with someone that has COVID. Therefore, they should be treated promptly, and if they're treated um, well, then that they should be uh, the disease should be well managed. For this and other diseases, 25% of patients are misdiagnosed the first time. For some uncommon diseases, this might take five or more years to get diagnosed, and it's it's really unbelievable that it's still happening in the 21st century, as many of these diseases can be correlated to specific medical data, such as uh, well, even now that we have the G Human Genome Project to more than 80% of diseases, even for uncommon diseases. The way we are presenting the solution at this time is um, a patient engagement tool in the form of a web app in, in which people can fill up the survey, answer questions that are pertinent to the case information without giving any private information. And then this will be fed to an AI, or AI that uses all the big data that I talked to you about to correlate that with other medical cases and then provide a result of the disease that they may have and with, with a quantifiable confidence of that. We are working right now in getting the suggestions for not only providing them with, with, an, uh, with a quantifiable idea of what they have, but also who can help them with it. As you can see in this demo, this is a web app that's, really, that's already available and can be used by anyone who's wondering if they may or may not have COVID and the one that will be shared with India. Through here, um, people can actually click to watch the video and make sure they're taking the lateral flow essay or answer the questionnaire to start feeding the information to our AI. This is available in English, Russian, Spanish, and Portuguese at this time. At this time. So when you click the video, you'll be able to see um, a video that was provided by Abingdon Health in which they um, explain how to take an ABC19 rapid test. Through this, um, people can make sure that they're following the procedure correctly. Our, uh, our survey was um, designed by, by UK um, medical doctors that were actually connected to the NHS. That's why we were able to use that data, unidentifiable data. So it gathers all the important information without um, tinkering with any private data. As you can see with the, with the user-friendly survey, the, all the important patient case information, such as the exposure risk, depending on where they're at, where they have traveled, 
if they are vaccinated or if even or if they are also among um, populations at risk are taken into account to provide a final diagnosis. All this information is um, it's crunched by our AI, but we are not as ter- it's storing any of identifiable data. So although we have all these results stored, we won't we wouldn't and no one would be able to really um, trace it back to anyone, which um, makes the tool HIPAA and GDPR compliant. So as you can see here, this is a, an example of, of the result that people would get, even if they had um, a rapid flow assay that came out as positive, but they have been taking care of themselves and they haven't been exposed to the virus, then this tool would actually provide them with a confidence interval of the unlikelihood of that result being correct. But we would still recommend them to get checked with a practitioner if they get an onset of symptoms. The same would, would still apply for the other type of patients that may not, that may have a negative test result, but they still feel the unwell and their medical case actually correlates to someone that may have COVID. So this type of information is visually understandable to people and provides some sort of confidence and tranquility of knowing what to do next. We also enabled the share, um, a shareable badge um, and this, this screen is also uh, screenshotable. So it can be used for events. Uh, we actually were talking with um, some people in Europe um, about using this app, this app for enabling in-person events, but we're still in, in the process of, of doing the talks as a lot of the attention for COVID has shifted to vaccination. Um, we still think getting di- people diagnosed promptly is extremely important for this disease and others that, that are out there as well. To build this, we, we leverage a lot of Amazon's and um, Google's um, online tools. So the algorithm is uh, it actually lives in Amazon SageMaker, which is an AWS cloud solution that enables ease, ease, of, ease of use of um, machine learning algorithms. It was tinkered and adapted to our use case by our data scientists used with, with Python and R, and R that are the languages which is written. Um, the backend, uh, all that big data is living right now in um, an NGINX instance, and it's connected to the to the React front end through a Golang API. At this time, we're still looking for other people that, that are um, interested in joining us and helping develop further develop the solution. Um, we have been talking with Novartis, which is a big pharma company, as well as um, the Health Ministry of Costa Rica to study the potential applicability of this type of solution. Let me know if, if you're interested or if you know anyone that is. Here's my contact information, you'll have it available. Thank you.